Rebecca, we have John, we have Irene, we have Marty, and in addition, we have Steve. Mr. Jones is with us, Mr. Means with us, Mr. Burkle is with us. I thought I saw Rob McGee. Yeah, Rob McGee is with us. Mr. Stan is with us, Mr. McGinley, and we also have a couple guests. <clears throat> you know, the, the first thing I had, I don't know if you've, anyone has had to even look at the agenda, but we did have a uh, committee. Don, I'm losing you. Don, your, your voice is off, Don, for some reason. We should probably, we should probably have everybody mute. Uh, so it might be jumping off until so you need to speak. Me? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I, I had said that did anybody get a chance to look at the Business Operation Committee meeting minutes from uh, Wednesday, January 21st, 2020? They were posted to the board docs. Anybody have a question or comment about those, those meeting minutes? I'm good with them. Okay, Tina. Give me a nod. I can't see you, Marty. You okay with those? You on mute? I'm okay. Well. Okay. I'm okay. Gonna... I, uh, I have a question coming up, but I'm good with the minutes as written. Okay. That takes us to... Uh, what I, I had used as a place marker 2.01 as part of the uh, food service management company's contract, I had to give them all our salary and wages. And with that, then they had to give it back to me as, as part of their, their document. They have not done that yet, but I was holding this place in case they did. So we're not ready to review that tonight. We'll have to review this on the 5th of, of May, which is two weeks from uh, this Thursday, okay? So we'll just keep holding that place. We won't be able to do anything with this on for our regular meeting on the 28th. And that takes us to 301 bond refinancing opportunities. You know, we live in a crazy world today and uh, the financial markets are much different than, you know, we saw oil actually traded a negative value yesterday for the first time ever. And heretofore, uh, school districts would always uh, issue bonds in a non-tax exempt status. So we were always held pretty much that our tax, our bonds would be non-taxable to the, to the purchaser as an advantage, it's a tax advantage. And that's how school districts operated forever. Well then uh, under the most recent um, tax um, policy changes under Trump, he, initiated, or not he, but Congress initiated a program where advanced fundings were no longer permitted. But what they never really considered was the fact that rates could possibly get so low that you could refinance bonds under, under taxable uh, provisions. And so that opportunity is potentially before us at this time. And with that, I'd like to turn this over to uh, Mr. Willard from uh, PFM and anybody else that he wants to introduce with this his group there. Okay, yeah, thanks Don. Uh, hope, hopefully everybody can hear me. So, so my name is Zach William. My firm is PFM Financial Advisors, more the district's independent financial advisor. Um, also with me on the phone is Mike Lillis and Brian Bradley from RBC Capital Markets. Uh, they're the district's bond underwriter. Um, together, you know, we're collectively the financing team and what we're going to do is talk about or the refinancing opportunity that Don just kind of teed up for you. You know, we haven't um, been in front of the board since 2018. Uh, that was the last time we had the ability to refinance some of the district's debt. Okay. So what we're going to talk about is the, the potential to refinance the district's 2015 uh, Series B bonds, um, which are outstanding in the amount of about 50 $8 million. So it is one of your larger bond issues. And what we're going to think, think about is taking the old higher interest rates on those and replacing them with today's new lower rates uh, to create debt service savings, similar to what we've done in the past. So we do have a handout. 
Does that? I might, to, I might have to email the sand out to myself here. Okay. Don, I think I, I saw it on board docs. Are you uh, maybe? I'm on I'm on board docs. If you could, if I'm sharing my screen properly. No, no, you're in the you're in the public part of board. You need to sign in. Oh, thank you. There we go. Zach, looks. Hey, Steve. Um, I want to make, make sure these series of bonds are the bonds we use to do the roadmap project. Correct. These were the bonds for the big, the big project. Back right, the roadmap project. Okay. Yeah. Correct. All right. Thank you. And real quick, while Don gets this ready, you know, what Don was talking about is, um, typically in the past, you could always refinance bond issues ahead of their call date. Okay. The call date of these bonds is not until 2023. All right. And with tax reform, that ability went away, but because interest rates are at such low levels, you can use taxable debt. So non-tax exempt debt to refund these bonds ahead of the call date. All right. So we've been monitoring this, you know, with district administration for really for about two years and we've gotten you know, interest rates have gotten so low that this is producing pretty significant savings at the moment. So that's why this is the first time you're hearing about it, you know, even though we've really been looking at this for a few years now. Okay. Back, so, are, there, are there any breakage fees? Well, we're, we're here, we'll talk about that here in a second. So let's, okay. we'll, we'll walk through these numbers. Before you move on there, Zach, um, could you just be a little bit more descriptive about how this change, you know, is affecting us where uh, the call date no longer allows us to refinance and the, um, the fact that the rates dropped. I'm having a little trouble myself understanding if, it, if they're not normally callable or uh, refinanceable, how come we can do this? So, so, so with tax reform, it took away the ability to refund debt ahead of the call date on a tax exempt basis. So all of your bond issues right now are all have tax exempt fixed interest rates. Okay. So that, that ability is gone. So we can't refinance these bonds until 2023 with tax exempt debt. But what we can do is you can use taxable debt in order to refund the bonds ahead of the call date. Now in a normal market that typically a lot of times doesn't make sense because it's not going to save you any money. But what we're seeing now because interest rates are so low, is that using taxable bonds to refinance your old bond issue today does produce, you know, quite significant savings. Um, so that's kind of what we're here to discuss. But, but the, st the status of whether it's tax exempt or not is only to the purchaser of the bonds, right? Correct. It doesn't make a difference to us. It's the you, people that are purchasing it. Yeah, the only thing you care about is what the interest rates are. Right, okay, that's what I wanted to be sure about. Thank you. I'll shut up now, go ahead. <laughs> No, that's a good, good question. Okay, so um, Don, if you want to scroll down to the first page. So here's an interest rate chart. If you scroll down a little bit further, you can see on the far right hand side, um, you know, there was an all time low in interest rates made in early March. Okay, that was the historic low. Um, that big spike that you see there, that was you know, as the free fall of all the markets started from COVID-19, you can see there was a jump in interest rates because people were just confused about what was going on. And now rates have settled back down into, you know, what is, you know, still a historic low. Okay. So the bottom line is interest rates are very, very low. And that's what's helping to create this opportunity right now. And that's why we want to, um, you know, bring this to your attention rather quickly and get set up so that maybe there's a chance once we, you know, kind of move forward here and get some paperwork done, there's a chance that you could jump into the market and save significant. Good command. That's all. Um, Donnie, if you scroll down to the next page. So this is your debt summary. Okay. So a lot of you have seen this page plenty of times over the last, you know, 15 or 20 years. Um, the top half of this page is what is your gross debt service and it's by bond issue. And we're talking about refinancing column four, which is your 2015 B bonds. Okay, and they have a final maturity in 2038. 
all right? And then over on the right-hand side of the page is your gross debt service total. So that's what appears in your budget. You know, when Don shows you a budget, it's gonna show that you have about $9.5 million worth of debt payments. And that runs out uh, for the life of your, of your debt. The bottom half of this page is net of the state reimbursement that you get on some of your borrowings, okay? So that's why those numbers are all a little bit lower because they're net of the reimbursement. And then over in column 16, you see the net number that would appear in your budget, okay? So at the end of the day, you have about $9 million of payments due um, every year for the debt service. So we're gonna talk about taking savings and lowering that number to be something um, you know closer to, well, here, we'll show you in, in just a moment, okay? Scroll down to the next page. Now here we just have some, some bullet points. Some of this we've already discussed. Um, you know, what, what is important on this page is if you remember in the past when we did refinancings, we always like to set a minimum net savings target. All right. So if you look at bullet number five there, it says that the district, um, you know, going through this with administration, we'd settled on, we only want to execute this refinancing as long as we can save at least seven and a half percent of the refunded amount. That's a metric and a, and kind of a, a, a way that we uh, measure the efficiency of the refinancing. All right. So similar to past refinancings, what we're going to talk about, and we'll show you a timeline in a second is we would, we would set this up. Um, you would pass a debt resolution a not to exceed debt resolution at an upcoming meeting. All right. And then if you remember, there's about six to eight weeks worth of back kind of office paperwork that we have to do uh, with Don, we have to get a credit rating, we have to go through all that. We can do all of those things so that we can get within a two week window of being able to lock in interest rates. So the key is getting to that two week window so that then we can look at the market and if it still saves at least seven and a half percent, then we can move forward with executing the refinancing and locking in the savings. If we get to that two week window and the refinancing doesn't work because the markets have changed, you know, which is a possibility, what we'll then do is we'll then go into a waiting and holding pattern where we'll monitor the refinancing to see if it makes sense to execute. All right. So it's no wasted work. It just kind of gets us close to the finish line. Now, since we've been monitoring this refunding, we've seen savings as high as, you know, $7 million. Okay, we're gonna show you this in a second, maybe even a little bit higher than that. And it's been as low as zero, where it saved you no money, all right? So again, we wanna find this sweet spot um, where we can save enough money that's, that it's worth uh, pulling the trigger on right now. And that's what we're gonna, uh, you know, help you accomplish. If you scroll down to the next page, okay, so this is the saving summary page. So this is the exciting page. So what we have here is we have two options, okay? So again, to recap, we're talking about taking your 2015 B bond issue, taking the old interest rates that are on those bonds and replacing with today's new lower rates, all right? So what we have here in column one, as you scroll down, we're showing estimated savings of $5.3 million, okay, over the life of the debt. And when you scroll down column five, you can see, and if, you know, if, you, if you've been through this with us before on a refinancing, you don't get a check in the mail for $5.3 million. What you do is you, ha you have savings in the form of budgetary relief, all right? So in column five, you can see you'd save about $250,000 in next year's budget. And then you have a couple years where you save just a couple thousand dollars. And then starting in the 2028 budget, you can see the, the, the major savings really kicks in to the tune of three or four, you know, almost $500,000 a year through the life of the debt. Now, the reason that it's structured this way, the savings is structured this way, is if you look in column four, that's your debt right now if you do nothing, right? Where you pay about $9 million a year in your budget out until 2027. And then in 2028, you can see that your debt payments jump up to about 9.3 million. And then in 2029, 9.5 million 
through the life of your debt. All right, so you do have a little spike uh, about eight years out. What we're doing in column five is we're taking that savings as to smooth out the spike so that at the end of the day when all the dust settles in column six, you can see your payments will roughly be $9 million a year uh, for the rest of, of the life of the debt. Okay, so that's, that's what we're calling saving structure option one. So you're gonna get a little bit of savings in next year's budget and then the savings will be used to smooth out that spike that starts eight years from now. All right, does everyone understand that one? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now if you go over to the blue, this is, this is a second option for how you could take the savings. Here, here we're not focused on trying to smooth out that spike in the future years. Here we're simply in column seven, taking the savings level over the life. So in this scenario, based on these numbers, you would save about $270,000 every budget year for the next 18 years. Okay, so that's what's called the level saving structure and that's, that's uh, option number two there. So we don't, we don't have to know which saving structure we wanna go with tonight. We just wanna present this information to you. Um, now these savings numbers will, will fluctuate, okay? The green option and the blue option right now, they're saving just around 10% of the old refunded bond amount. So remember on the previous page, we talked about the metric. We only wanna move forward with this if we can save at least seven and a half percent. You know, right now in today's market, you're saving a little bit more than seven and a half, closer to, to 10% uh, type number. Okay, so again, what we would propose, if you scroll down to the next page, We have a little timeline here. So tonight, April 21st, you know, we're presenting this information. As early as next week, you can have the debt resolution available for you to approve. Now, kind of going back to when we've done this before, the debt resolution doesn't lock us into doing anything. It's kind of getting the administrative part out of the way so that we can then get all the paperwork done all right, you don't incur any costs or anything like that. And it doesn't lock you into doing the transaction. It simply gets us so that we can get close to that two week window. Then we can come back and report, you know, back to Don and, and the, the administration, if we can still save that seven and a half percent. You know, if you look at the bottom of the timeline, it shows that the, the earliest day we could probably lock in interest rates is early June by the time we get uh, kind of all the other things done. Um, in, in order to enter the market. So we would be able to move forward with all those things and then lock in interest rates as early as, uh, you know, the beginning of June, as long as we can save at least that seven and a half percent. So any thoughts, questions, comments? I, I have a question. Um, doing this now, is that going to hamper us from doing other bond issues for if we need other projects in the future? No, it does not. Um, you know, this is actually a benefit to that because what this does is it lowers your debt service amount that's in your budget, you know, sort of creates savings in your budget. Um, you know, if you ever did need to come back and do future projects, you know, you would then have a kind of a lower starting spot of where your debt currently is. If you can, you know, go forward with an efficient refinancing. Zach, as far as the breakage fees and any related fees, these same. I think you cut out, you cut out there. I didn't hear the, the question. Repeat the question, Marty. So I think I, I think I know where you're going. So so the savings that we showed you back on the previous page, so that is net of all the costs that we estimated. It's net of any state reimbursement that you get, and it's net of you know what we're calling what what you're referring to as the breakage fee. It's the true net savings to the district. So I th I think that's what your question was going to be. I think we lost them all together. Uh, he's waiting to get back on there, Zach. Um, is there a reason why we're not looking at our uh, 215 
uh, A series bonds at this time? Yeah, yeah, good question. So the 2015 A bonds, when we sold those back then, they had uh, lower interest rates associated with them. So going through that refinancing process right now with the taxable debt, because we're still far out away from the call date, it doesn't, it isn't efficient, Stephen, it doesn't save you any money. So right now the 2015 Bs are um, the, the best and kind of do, most prime for refinancing. Do you, know what the, do, you, do you know what the rate difference is off the top of your head? But, so the interest rates on the 15 B bonds, the average rate is, is a, a coupon is about a four and a half or 5%. I think on the 2015 A's, it's closer to a, a 3%, three and a half. And, and right now the, the bond market's at what, 1.8? Is that what it's? Well, so, yeah, so the page that we showed you, that's the, that's the 10 year, what we call MMD. It's kind of like, it's a benchmark. It's kind of like the 10 year treasury, but it's the tax exempt version, but it's just a good gauge to understand, you know, what the market's doing in general. Um, you know, when we actually go lock in your interest rates, if you remember from previous times, Steve, you know, every maturity that we sell has its own fixed interest rate. Right. So the, the 15 year rate will be a little bit higher than the 10 year rate, which is higher than the five year rate. Um, so they all kind of have different fixed interest rates when you go through the, the process uh, of, of RBC selling the, the actual bonds. The, the next question I have is, and I know you can't predict this, but I just want a little bit of guidance here, is on the market conditions themselves, you know, when we're selling a tax exempt bond, it has a little bit of extra attractiveness, you know, for the, for the purchaser. Right. We're in a very low interest market now. It's a, it's a taxable, you know, it's a taxable, taxable entity. Um, you know, um, I, I, I'm just, I'm worried about where we're going to be if the market isn't, as favorable and you know you know where are we going to be on a on a fee basis if, if we decide not to enter the market how much how much uh you know money are we going to have tied up in preparation sure so so yes yeah, so a good question so the, again if we if we kind of go through the process and we get to the the finish line and and it doesn't make sense to do the refinancing we'll, we'll just go into a hold mode um, you won't incur any fees other than uh, the, the fee that's associated with the resolution ad that's going to be placed tomorrow if you would like bond council to do it. Right. So that's that's $1,500 or something like that. Right. Um, there won't be any other fees incurred until you actually execute the refinancing. Okay. All right, that's Zach, all I have. Zach, can you hear me? Yes. That was my question. It was a good Kreskin move you pulled there. You knew what I was going to ask. Thank you. <laughs> I've heard Not that. Not sure one. what happened. <laughs> yeah. So any, any other thoughts or questions? So um, I think the, the only thing we're asking tonight is if you would like to move forward or, you know, have this available for a vote at your meeting on the 28th, bond council who's uh, Mark Stein from Eckerd Siemens in conjunction with your solicitor, they're going to place an ad in the paper tomorrow that's required by the debt act. And that needs to be in tomorrow in order to have the resolution available April 28th. You know, you, you can wait until May and pass this so you have more time to think about it. The, the only risk there is, you know, just kind of what Steve was talking about is interest rates moving around. Um, you know, Don thought that maybe kind of giving you this as early as possible was, was a prudent given the market situation and, and how volatile everything is. Uh, Zach, there's really no reason not to do this, correct? There's no downside to this, right? No, there really is no reason to not kind of move forward with this step of it. Well, a $1,500 fee other than that, right? Correct, right. yeah. So that's the only cost that we incur right now is a fifteen hundred dollar fee. Right? Well, don't quote me on fifteen hundred. It's, it's well, whatever, whatever it costs to put the ad in. It's it's a, it's a minimal. Yeah. Minimal. Uh, yeah. All right. Minimal outlay. As compared to the cost benefit of the upside. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. 
I mean, I know we can't take a quote unquote board vote, but I think for the committee, I would think it would get out of the committee. Does anybody on the committee object to that? No. 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 Okay. So, so we'll let bond council know uh, that they're able to place the ad and then what'll happen is next week at your regular meeting on the 28th, you know, you'll actually have the, the debt resolution available for approval. The debt resolution, uh, you know, the, the main important point of that and Mark will explain it, but again, is that you're going to pass this and we're only going to move forward with the refinancing as long as we can save at least seven and a half percent. All right. That's, that's kind of the real important piece of the puzzle. Um, so that'll be available for you next week. And then we'll work with Don. Uh, Don's got a lot of work to do to get, to get this teed up, but he's been through this process plenty of times too. Um, and then we'll, you know, we'll report back uh, probably sometime in May and let you know how things are going. Okay. Sounds great. Sounds good. Sounds good. And, and again, just to reiterate Steve's point, it, it makes no difference to us whether it's a taxable or non-taxable debt, correct? It, it does not. Yeah, it does. I just think it, I just think the market shrinks, but at the at this dollar figure, but hey, yeah, it's, sure, yeah. it's I, worth I it's worth it's worth going to going the market at these rates. I mean, yeah, there's plenty of cash sitting on the sidelines that people may just mm -hmm. want to get in the market with. That's true too. Yeah, and there's, there's institutional investors as well that need these instruments. That, you know, that's not necessarily the individuals. True. Yeah, and, and ever since the, the advance for fundings went away, more and more taxable debt for local governments across the country is being issued. So, you know, that, that has become a bigger market um, simply because nobody across the country can advance or fund their bonds. So right. taxable bonds have been much more prevalent the last two years. All righty. Hey, Great. Zach, this is Michael. Can you hear me? Everyone hear me? Yeah. You can? Yep. Uh, so just one thing I just wanted to just mention that um, one decision that we'll have to make, we don't have to do it right now, is uh, when Zach went over those two saving structures, we'll just want to uh, know before we actually go out into the market which saving structure um, the district would like. Um, that doesn't have to be decided now, but it's just something, you know, to think about. Yeah, good point, Mike. Yep. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's something the board will work out with yeah. uh, our administration to find out which we think best one fits, fits our model. And um, and RBC's cutting their rates in half, I heard. <laughs> true, true, Mike? We're working like heck to Okay, do all right. I'm just making sure you're still in the ball. <laughs> we'll do our best. Thank you. All right, Jim. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thanks, right. everyone. Stay healthy. You too. Stay safe. Bye, uh, everyone. Stay safe. All right. Bye-bye. The, the uh, next item on our agenda is the budget presentation. And if I can uh, work this again, get to that. Unless anybody has any questions or comments after those guys left. I'm good. Can you guys uh, see that? I can. Okay, so we yeah, have the Deshamini. I'm sorry, Tina. No, I'm good. I can see it. Okay, so we have the Deshamini School District proposed tentative 2020-21 budget. And you know, talk about the, how things can change. We had it um, uh, as of March 12th. The administration was prepared to provide the school board with a balanced budget. Uh, at, at that day, we had uh, a deficit of approximately $900,000, and we had not yet uh, taken into consideration any of the upcoming retirements that we were expecting. And at one time, we were even discussing whether or not to offer an early retirement, which that did not happen. And uh, we had expense revenues of $187 million and expenses of, oops, you know, my screen's blocked, so I had to do that. Let me go back to that. I'm sorry. I have to share my screen. Let me 
me just pull this up up here. I can't read what the expenses are because my screen is blocked, but it was, I believe 188.2 million. I think the difference was $900,000. And so we were, we, were, we were ready to go. We, we thought everything was gonna be good. And then cut low and behold, we had uh, what we all know now is the coronavirus come through our lives. And my, my machine's moving just a little bit slow. Hey, Don, another thing is at the bottom of your screen, I don't know if you can get rid of that. There's a message there, at least on my screen, I see a Chrome message. Yeah. It's blocking yeah. your, some of your presentation. That's what's blocking mine, but I don't know how to get rid of it. <laughs> well, if you want to give it, to, if you want to give control to me. There we I'll, go. I got it. Okay. So we had this, uh, the coronavirus, which completely changed everything in our in our lives. I mean, talk about how we do work, how we go to school, how we shop, how we, uh, uh, you know, go see friends or no, or don't go see friends and family anymore. It's changed everything, and it certainly changed our budget assumptions uh, beginning that day. So our, our assumptions have changed dramatically, and and what follows this evening is a look uh, forward to the twenty. 21 school year to estimate at least how, if even if we're not trying to know exactly how much uh, this pandemic will affect the school district and as it relates to financial constraints. Uh, one thing that we're going to do though as we move forward is we're going to use our uh, baseline operational activity, meaning that kids are in school, we're picking them up for school on the first day on buses, they're going to they're going to remain in school for 180 days, we're going to serve them lunch every day, they're gonna have recess every day, they're gonna be in front of their, their uh, teachers every day, just as if, as schools, we always knew it. And, and if we budget that way, uh, I think it's safest because if we have interruptions, the only, the, they would typically only reduce expenditures, they would not necessarily increase expenditures. So I think this is the most conservative approach, assuming that we hopefully will be in school on the first day of school and will continue there for the remainder of the year. Is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. the, the state of Pennsylvania uh, is, in, is in the same predicament at this point. As of April the 16th, uh, Governor Wolf has projected that uh, because of the shelter in place, we have a, he has a $5 billion deficit for his fiscal year 2020-2021. And, you know, previous to that, he had in, in the beginning of February, he had pronounced his budget estimates and, and included in that increases for school district in our basic ed subsidy. And we were to receive an additional approximately $250,000, as well as an additional $70,000 for special education. And we know now that, that those, those increases aren't gonna happen and they can no longer be expected to happen. The state now is discussing that they may pass a half year budget at the end of June and then come back and look at it again in December. But they're still gonna hold us to our time frame and expect you all and the administration to make perfect decisions with all the imperfect information that we have available. One of the other things the state has done is they, they have promised not to have any significant reduction to the transportation subsidy so long as, and we would be held harmless so long as we paid our contractors as if all the runs had been made in the 2019-2020 school year. And we have done that. So we're expecting that we will be paid as much as, if not more, uh, than we did in the 2018-2019 school year. And I can show, that'll be presented on a future page here. And I only, only put this caveat in there that while the state makes that promise, they have in the past tried to build the revenue, the transportation revenue stream into the basic ed subsidy, and, and they failed to ever pay the full amount on time. So we're always uh, booking an accrual uh, for the amount that they owe us at the end of each each fiscal year, uh, they they pay slower and slower all the time. But that's that's just part of the business. And prior to the pandemic, we were we were anticipating an Act One tax increase, and the budget numbers that are contained herein include that tax one increase of two point six percent or four point two four mills. And this, in, this represents an increase of $3.3 .3 million in taxable revenue uh, to, the, current, to the, current, the line item of current taxes. And while this is a difficult situation at the time, at this time, 
The school district needs this revenue now more than they ever did to keep things solvent moving forward in the future years. And one of the reasons I say that is because uh, if you decide not to raise taxes this year, if this is a board decision, the board decides that they do not want to do that, it's an opportunity that you lo lose forever. You've already made com commitments on your salaries and wages to your professional staff, uh, your non-professional staff. You're about to do it with your uh, uh, administrative staff. And so if you lose this opportunity, it's lost forever. And if you look forward, the economic pandemic will reduce the Act 1 percentages in future years because the Act 1 tax increase is tied to the state average weekly wage. It, it's, it's a... It's, an, it's a factor in that, in that calculation. So if you look back after what happened in the 2008-2009 recession, the Great Recession, you can see that the tax, the Act 1 increase the first year was 2.9%. But as soon as the unemployment uh, hit, the, hit the economy, it dropped at less than half of that or 1.4%. And I expect and I, I predict that that's exactly what's going to happen moving forward. And, my, and I get this information as well as from the association, the Pennsylvania Association of School Business Officials. They're warning all school business managers to predict that your future Act 1 increases will be curtailed significantly in years moving forward because of the pandemic. So you, you have this opportunity now, your hands will be tied in the future years when you try to, if you, if you miss this opportunity. In addition to that, the, if you get off the state level, now you get down to the local economic impact. We have our assessed valuations of the school district are up by $1.2 million or a tenth of a percent. Uh, you know, we're trying to identify negative imp impacts or impediments to some of our revenue streams. And one of those might be the, to the collection rate on our current real estate taxes. And so to demonstrate what that impact would be, I've reduced the, the um, the revenue percentage, collection percentage, from the normal 98.8 to 97%. And that has a reduction of uh, $2.3 million in the current year. Now, that's not money that's lost forever. It would, it would then preclude over to your delinquent taxes in, years, in, in, in future years. But it would be a reduction in the current year. Now, I just want to make sure that we understand that I'm, you know, I, I'm making uh, predictions and assumptions here without really knowing if that's good. Someone could argue to me that, that you know, Dawn, you have that, so you're totally overestimating that. It should, you know, it won't, it won't be get below 98%. And they may be right. And another board member could say, Dawn, you're, you're way off the base. You know, it's going to go to 96%. And that person might be right. I, I don't know. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to identify areas in the, in the revenue streams that will be impacted. And we could discuss if, if, if we believe that those assumptions are, or too little or too much, but I'm just trying to make you aware of where I think that the, the revenue streams will be af affected. And I think the collection rate will be one of them. And again, I, 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 this, regardless of this $2.3 million reduction, the Act 1 increase would increase the, the budget by revenue by $3.3 million. And then with the additional millage, that gives us a net change of our current real estate taxes of $1.2 million. Another area that I think will be negatively impacted is the occupational privilege tax. And I'm reducing that by 74,000 or about 35% as compared to what was uh, collected in 1819. And in another area is the real estate transfer tax. I'm projecting that to get down 15% or $250,000. And it all depends on your, on your perception of how quickly the economy is going to recover. If we have a V-shaped recovery or if it's more U-shaped, how, how big these impacts will be. Two other areas of the mercantile tax, I'm predicting it to be down by 877,000 or 60% based on 18, 19 numbers, as well as the business privilege tax down 35% or 526,000. And, you know, I, you, we can argue that some of these are, these numbers are somewhat arbitrary, but again, I'm trying to put focus on the items that I believe will be in negatively impacted as we move forward. Any questions on that? I have a question. Why did you use 60% on the mercantile tax and 35% on the business privilege? Oh, be, it, it was just sort of round numbers, uh, Marty. I was just trying to, I was, there was really no rhyme or reason. 
Yeah, I mean, they're, they're the same base, uh, so I was just wondering. Okay. Yeah. All right. I have lots of questions and comments, but I'll wait till the end when you're done. Okay. Well, this right. is just been uh, one, of, one question before you move on. Yes, uh, I always meant to ask this, and since you brought up, brought these two taxes up, the business privilege tax and the mercantile tax, do we set those rates? Those set those, yes, you do, but those rates are set under Act 511 at a half mil. All right, so they're fixed rates. Yes. Okay, you, you can charge you less. Ability, you can charge you less, ability. but you can't charge more. Yeah, you, yes, correct. You can't charge more. And do you know where we're at? You're at a half, half a million. Part a half. Okay. Thank you. So here I'm showing all, most of the local, big local revenue uh, items, line items to our budget. We have that $1.2 million increase on the real estate taxes. We have a $250,000 reduction in the real estate transfer. Real no change on the public utility. The head tax really shouldn't change from and, and just to, so we have our, our columns lined up, we have what was actually received in 1819, what was budgeted in 1920, and now what we're budgeting in 2021. And the difference is between our 2021 budget and our 1920 budget. When would you know the, what we received in the 1920 budget? Uh, some, <clears throat> excuse me, some of them I know pretty well right now. Uh, we, we should have... 99% of the of our collections on real estate taxes collected right now. So that I know. The business privilege and mercantile tax, they'll drag on uh, beyond June, you know, into June, July, August. Right, okay. And we're making accruals for those. We had 90% of our real estate taxes already? I'm sorry, we had 90% what? Of our, ta our real estate taxes already? Did I hear that right? Yes. Yeah, because the bills go out in July you have the discount period in July and August, you have the face in September, October, and you have the delinquent in November, December. And by that, by the end of December, the tax collectors should be turning that over to the, to the county for uh, delinquent, as delinquent real estate taxes. For the bill that went out 7119. Yes, 7119. You should have paid that by now. You accusing me not of paying it, Don? Not yet. No, I'm about to say. I'm hoping you. There's a there's a more paid stamp on that one. So then we have the occupational privilege, which again I'm trying to to identify that there will be problems with that one potentially. Amusement tax. If Sesame Place doesn't open up on time, that could be hindered. And then we have delinquent taxes, which. And a, and a down economy will probably go up. So on these total local taxes, I'm identifying that we may be down as much as $275,000. Next page, we have these receipts from PA schools. I'm not sure what that was in, seven, that in 1920, but my 2021 budget, this, is, this represents parking fees and student admissions fees for gate receipts for athletics, typically. Uh, book, lost books, that kind of stuff. Investment income, I was challenged on this by the administration, but I believe that if we're, we, we get a little bit more aggressive in some of our uh, investments, instead of just letting that money roll over in 90 day certificates with PEDSLAF, I believe we can keep that $2 million that was actually collected in 1819 as we would have more money uh, you know, after, after results of the 1819 school year, we'd have more money in our fund balance, and I think we can we can maintain that two two million dollars, even if rates drop here in the next six months. Facility fees, I just kind of split the bathwater there between the, the last year's and the and the, what was actually collected in the in the 1819 school year, and then miscellaneous revenue. Again, I'm I'm mirroring more what was in the 1819 year actually collected than what was in the 1920 year, and so we have an additional. Uh, $3 million in these re local revenue items, but $83,000 less than what was budgeted in the 1819 school year. And this takes us to our, our revenue for the state. And the state has already identified that we're going to get $700,000 in stimulus money from the federal government out of the first Taxpayer Relief Act out of Congress. 
and that's all well and good, but what they haven't yet identified is whether or not they'll use that to supplant and not supplement their funds that would come to the school district. In this, in this, rep, in this uh, presentation, I'm taking the more conservative approach that they're going to uh, use our $700,000 to supplant what they should have been giving us. So I'm reducing their, their line item by $700,000. I'm going back to the previous year for what we got in special education and I'm holding transportation harmless based on what they, what they promised us if we paid our contractor. Health services shouldn't change. Tuition really won't change. Retirement's based on our, our wages. Social Security's based on our wages. Plan con is the, based on the bonds, what the state share is. Property tax uh, reduction is based on the gambling revenue, which the state was supposed to uh, uh, send out a certification that they had the funds to, to pay that, but I haven't seen that yet. But that is what you... Hey, Don, we lost you there. You, you were up the plan con, Don, and we lost you. Oh, I'm sorry. The property tax reduction of the 3591000 that's the revenue from the gambling uh, operations in the state, and that is what is used to uh, fund your homestead, farmstead exclusion for the, uh, the, the property tax homeowner in the, in the Chamonix School District. So that's divided equally among all the homeowners that uh, have signed up for the Homestead Farmstead Exclusion. Hey, Don? Yes. I noticed you didn't make any real modification on, the, on that line. I mean, aren't we going to be expecting that the gambling revenue is going to be way down since they closed the casinos? No, you know what? I, I don't think we are going to uh, see that. I, I think that because the NFL got their season underway, I thought the, I thought the casinos were having a pretty good year. Um, I, I, and the, the, gut, or the uh, state revenue chairman was uh, supposed to certify on April 1st whether they had the funds to do that or not. I haven't heard that he didn't, but I haven't heard that he did either. I'm just making an observation. He would know better than I. That's all. The casinos are closed. Yeah, but they didn't close until, until March. And that happened pretty late in the state fiscal year. But I, I, I get your point. And if it does... What it, it, only, it, only, it only is used to reduce your property taxes for the homestead farmstead exemption. So if they give us slightly less, that would only mean that the homeowner would get slightly less off his tax, taxes. And then we have the miscellaneous grants of the $1.3 million, very similar to last year. So we have an overall reduction compared to last year, 882000 700000 of that is because I believe that the state is going to supplant our money use our money on, on their behalf to give to the school district because of their financial woes. It's been done before, so it will probably be done again. That's exactly right, Steve. I've, I've been through this before. Now, the federal programs, this is where I'm putting that $700,000 in um, that the state should have given me. And then the difference here is the $1.2 million. So this total revenues are $183,237,000. 788 for the district, uh, up just $14,693 over the previous uh, approved budget. And so then this, what's happened since on uh, March 6th is we've had these staffing changes. We now know that these 15 individuals, professional employees, have submitted their intent to retire officially. And I'm identifying those in yellow that we will use the new provision in the contract that which allows us not to replace the individual, but instead assign that those, those positions at the high school level to their compatriots and pay them $5,000 a piece. So you're taking $160,000 person out of the budget and you're replacing it with $25,000 plus piecers uh, to their coworkers for them to teach six periods. So we have identified four of those that we, uh, we believe will work next year, but we have now 15 people who have identified that they're retired. How and come we, this four? Well, that, that, you know, that's, that's something that you, Mr. Means, I believe on the meeting, he, he in, uh, has been working with, I believe, uh, Mr. Ryan Staub 
and the other uh, secondary administrators who have been looking at this to see if it can go further. Paul, are you out there? I am, and, and, and Mrs. Hollenbach, he's, he's accurate that some of these we cannot touch. For example, special ed there, there's a provision that we, we are not allowed to touch special ed because it's a special area. Um, and then, go ahead, I'm sorry. Number 10, it says art. Art, art we have retirements and, and body for body, you might not be able to replace that. Um, there's 8.4 in there and we're already doing it. Um, we're cutting 0. 0.6 in art through, through uh, dialogue with me and Ryan as far as enrollment. Um, there's just not the available bodies to do that in that department. So it, it goes on department size as well. Okay. Any other questions on the staffing, professional staffing? What about the other health ed position? As far as compressing that into the yeah. Again, there's only nine, there's only nine PE teachers currently. There's three retirements. Um, again, with the provisions in the contract, they have to be tenured as well. So you don't have the numbers there, Steve, body wise. All right. I don't want to get into great detail over that now. We'll talk about it. Talk about it later. It's always been a complicated uh, an area to explain. So we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it in a different setting. Okay. And we're expecting more retirements to come in this year. We, you know, we had one again today. It's not on the list, but um, so we're looking at that as well. And now I'm going back to to what were the budget assumptions were and some of the, the staffing changes that were not, did not uh, produced by retirements. We added, at the time of our budget assumptions, we were adding seven, seven elementary positions, and the numbers before you today reflect five of those positions remain. Uh, we, at the time, we were adding a social studies high school position, and instead of that position being added, we have used the six positions to compress uh, those, what would be those, uh, posi that position to others in the in the department. So there's another compression there that, you know, could have been on that other page if there'd been a social studies teacher there. Uh, we had a coordinator of student affairs, which we removed from the assumptions uh, based on the current uh, economic situations. We're not going to um, uh, pursue that as administratives, administratively. What, um, what school was that for? That was for Pearl Buck. Thank you. We have uh, still included a middle management position in technology, uh, AKA someone uh, the likes of uh, Todd Perry. Um, that's still in there. And we have eliminated the position in the business office, which was the financial services manager. Uh, that person resigned this year and uh, we are moving forward to eliminate that position from the budget completely and continue. Uh, providing the services we have. I have a proposal I'd like to show a personnel committee how I think we could do that um, much more effectively and efficiently using the people in the house. All right, Don, I was, I was going to ask you. What are the five elementary positions for? Like what grades and things of that nature? Paul, do you have that? Because I, I just, I just assigned one to each of the, each of the buildings. I didn't get to, I didn't get down to the grade level in my budget. Well, well, again, we're going to have to get back down to the grade level because, I mean, I, I, like I said, I have a lot of questions and comments, but I mean, we're going to have to look to shade everywhere we can because of everything's kind of been turned on its head. Again, going back and going back to the budget assumptions, it's, it's two in kindergarten, two in first grade, and an additional one in third grade across the district. And then everything else balances out. For example, I have a plus one at Hoover in second grade, but down one at Tawanka. So it's a wash in that grade level. So the three grade levels that I acknowledged are an increase in overall teaching. 
teaching well, assignment. Well, it might be a good time soon, too, since I know we started kindergarten registration already. And I know at one of the meetings, I forget which one, Joe said we were already getting enrollments in. If we can have an updated, that little staffing chart with the blue, green, red, all those charts to see again, to see where we stand. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that, that's what's being used to, to guide these five elementary positions to keep you within the contractual class size limits. Uh, right, to it's just hard to, I mean, I know the chart, it's hard to, because we don't have, we don't have, it wasn't put in with this, so I'm right. going off of memory because I don't want to lose my connection here. <laughs> okay. Go back and find it. So it's two at kindergarten, two at first, and one at second? One and second. Yeah. And then there's other maneuvers in inside those grades in between buildings that are just wash each other out. Got it. Are you going to ask something? Yeah. I'm sorry, Don, the financial service manager. Um, yes. I'm glad you brought it up. You want to talk to the committee because I had thoughts on that and I, uh, we want to talk about that more in depth. You want to talk to that about, did you say death at the end? More, more in death. death. Oh. In, 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 the, uh, in the personnel committee. Okay. Yes. He yes. likes talking everything to death as well. He does talk everything to death, but that's a different story. Yeah. Well, I, I thought that's what he said. I, mean, I can't believe he said that. Okay. I'm good. All good. My, my, if I just move to the next screen. Now we go to the expenditure comparison, just as we did the the um, the revenue comparison. We're comparing what we actually spent in 2018, 2019, when we had a very good fiscal year financially, what was budgeted in 2019, 20, and then what we're budgeting in 2021. And you can see this is this is uh, education. This is instructional um, comparison for regular ed, special ed, vocational ed, uh, preschool and on parochial schools even, on the 1500s there. And you can see that we have, uh, we're pretty much in line where we were budgetarily, but more than what we had in 2018, 2019. And if you're gonna have, have expenditure increases in a school district, this is where you want those expenditures to be. You don't want them in support uh, in, in other areas. You want them with, with uh, instruction, uh, with uh, teachers, instructing students. So we have an $800,000 increase there. And as we move forward to the next page, now you have your, your support services, everything from nursing, administration, principals, uh, the fiscal office, maintenance, transportation, IT, and the, everything else and other. And you can see there where we have uh, significantly $500,000 less than our 1920 budget um, yet still more than what we had in the 2018, 2019. What I did when I, I sat down with this budget for this year, I said, when we needed to make cuts, I said, Hey, you know what? We had a, we had a 2018, 2019 school year, which was pretty successful, both academically as well as, uh, fiscally. And I'm trying to move those non-personnel services numbers back to what was done in 2018, 2019, because we live with those numbers and they were good. And we had a good successful year. So I'm trying to get those numbers back down to those levels. And then you have this thir these 32 and 33, 32 student activities. Uh, 33 is the uh, community activities. 4,000 is the uh, improvements to the school district. 5,100 is your debt service. 5,200 is your uh, capital expenditures. And then 5,900 is the budgetary reserve. And so you can see that's down an additional $790,000 $790, as compared to the 2019-2020 budget. And even less than the 2018-2019 actual. So our 2021 budget expenditures are down 450000 at $185,403,000 as compared to last year. So the bottom line is you have revenues of 183.2 million, expenditures of 185.4, and you have a budget deficit looking in the 2021 school year of two and a quarter million dollars, two point, let's say $2.2 million. 
And then uh, for the, this is for, tax increase to the Act 1 women, correct? Yes. So people are losing their jobs and businesses are being shuttered and we're still asking our residents to do taxes to the limit. And I understand the reasoning for it, but everything's kind of turned on its head right now too for everybody. Don, where do we stand budget to actual for this year? Tell me we have a uh, surplus. We do. We have a probably, I'm looking at, you know, the, if you look at uh, the personal services, we agreed to pay everybody what we were going to pay them. So there's really no savings there. Right. So you take it down to things and, and those and contracts and such, even some of the contracts for the IU were paying, you know, what we should have paid as if the students went. But still, I think revenues are going to be down about $2 million. I think expenditures will be down $4 million. So I think you have a net surplus of at least $2 million. All right. So that's a $2, $2 million bump to uh, fund balance then. That's correct. Right. Yeah, because it's only, you know, it's, a, it's only a, you know, one time. one time savings. It's not something that's going to reoccur. Right. So basically, if we left everything the way that this was without a discussion, we would take the deficit from the fund balance to balance this budget. You kind of drifted off at the end. Say that again, Tina. So if we left everything as is, and I still have lots of questions, to get to this budget deficit to zero, we would have to take from the fund balance, correct? That's correct. That two point two five million would have to come from the fund balance. But we got and two million dollars. But we got two million dollars rolling in from prior year, correct? Right, so it's a, it's a neutral wash. I get that. And yeah. We still have, but we still have money coming out of the fund balance for Peasers already. Is that correct? No. Th this there's no there's no money in this budget to come out. That's that same two point two five million. There's, there's so it's all over together. So the capital projects, the repairs or whatever, the whatever, whatever, all. All of that is, is covered by recurring revenue until you get to this last $2.25 million. So there's no fund balance transfers in here at this point in time, correct? That's correct. So that if we didn't do an act one increase, we would have to take that $3 million out of fund balance. That'd be an additional $3.3 million out of fund balance. That's correct. Or we find more cuts. Right. Or you find more cuts. Well. I think we need to do a combination of both. Right. You, you, you're, I, you know, this, I bring it up every year and we keep running a fundamental structural issue with the with the budget we're doing very good we're in a lot better shape than what we used to be but this this what's now been thrown into the mix which is an unpredictable environment that is definitely going to affect future revenues but we don't know how high it's going to affect future revenues um you really have some issues going forward as far as where this where this goes if you take that two and a half million or two and a quarter million out of fund balance on top of the three million that, that we're going to ask for theoretically it's still going to put us two million dollars behind the bubble next year regardless of the fact that we may pick up two million dollars in savings no it's going to put um, you five million dollars behind next year right, well, right. 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 Well, the law well, the three is reoccurring though once you raise the taxes the three is reoccurring. If you don't raise the taxes, then, I think, I then think, you got uh, the problem. I think Don misheard you. I think he was, you were saying uh, no right. act. But you, you right. were so, so you got a problem. We got an issue where we're still grow, growing elementary enrollment. You're telling us we need more teachers, right? Kindergarten mm -hmm. is, is, is killing us. I think this administration really needs to prepare and give a presentation to the board I'm going back to a half day kindergarten program. Uh, it's going to fix three things. It's going to fix the, the capacity issue. It's going to fix the, the payroll issue and it's going to fix help fix part of the bottom line issue because you can transfer those teachers from kindergarten into positions that we need and reduce the staff. Now I'm not saying I want to do that and I'm not saying it's the thing we would want to do, but what I'm saying is, is you have to be prepared to do this because looking forward, 
there's a there's a fundamental problem with us being able to, to continue to fund the district at this level, especially with the uncertainty that's going to be in the coming year. I think it needs to be more than just kindergarten. I think we need to look, and I'm not a fan of cutting programs, but I really think we need to look at where we, I'm not saying it's going to be popular, and we had asked for this, I forget, two or three years ago. We need to look at programs that we can cut and how much savings it is or is not. And ultimately, last time we did this exercise, we chose not to cut any of them. But I, I think we need to go back and look at all of that. You know, and I understand the elementary teachers, and yes, kindergarten, unfortunately, might have to be looked at. But I think we need to look at the districts, too. Like, we're hiring teachers, two teachers. I, I don't know where, because I don't have the papers in front of me. But just say we're hiring two first grade teachers in Hoover is, um, you know, one of the other schools underutilized that if we were to move kids around, which again, is none of it's good options, but we're asking to raise taxes right now on people that don't have jobs. Like, I think it's going to be difficult. And I think we need to look, I think everything needs to just be on the table right now. Well, of, I would say, of course, uh, the only reason I, I talk about kindergarten is it's, the only grade that we're offering that, you know, isn't state mandated. Um, well, no, I, I want to do that, but I want to look right. at everything. I'm not, right. we, I, we, we have a responsibility like to make sure that we fund one through 12 grades as adequately as possible, but right. we also have to be prepared. Steve? Yes. I think it's, um, I think we should remember that we made a, a firm commitment to the community that we were not going to mess with the program. Well, I understand that, but we're, uh, I, un I understand the money. I understand right. what you're saying. We're not talking about 500,000. We're talking about $5 million. And we're talking about the fact that next year is even going to be more uncertain than this year. Now, I'm not saying to do it. I'm just saying we got to take these things into consideration. They need to be researched. And I think everything needs to be researched right now. I mean, this co going on with COVID-19, right or wrong, and the different philosophies has put school districts basically on their heads. And we need to reopen the doors and look at everything to make the hard decisions and not just go along to get along. I, I think we don't have enough data on some of these things to make a, an informed decision. And well, so throwing darts on a dartboard right now without uh, enough facts. And I, think, I think that this year uh, is probably not the best year uh, to talk about like a, a tax increase. I'm not against the tax increase, but uh, it's a lot of people that are hurting out there. Well, that's the issue, and it's the what I'm more concerned about. I'm not really that concerned about this year. I'm concerned about the uncertainty going forward, and I don't want to be unprepared to deal with that. That's that's what I'm. What's more concerning to me is the uncertainty going forward. So let me. Can I jump in and say just two things? One is I just want to remind everyone that the, at the very beginning of this presentation, Don did say that on March 12th, we did have a budget that wasn't using any fund balance money. Yes, it was using Act 1 at that time. That was before we got into the, the COVID shutdown and all of that. But we had a, a comfortable presentation for, for March that was showing you uh, fully funded for 2021, Act 1 increase, no fund balance, nothing for PEASERS, all of that. So we were in a good spot there. The reason that we have this deficit now, this $2.2 million, is purely because of the adjustments that Don just went through related to the uncertainty. Now, we don't know how that's gonna shake out. And so we will know better next year once the dust settles. We could take from the, the, the two million from the fund balance and then you'll make a better, more informed decision next year. The issue with the Act One tax increase and Steve and Tina, we can do all of that. We'll, we'll, we can do the research, get you the programs and all. But the real crux of the problem is less about getting to next September, and it's getting to September of 2021, 2022, uh, uh, with, and 2023 with the uh, contracts that are already in the books for those years. And if you don't have that tax base increased for next year. I know, we lose it forever, but. Yeah, well, you, and then that, and if we cut programs this year, 
to get to next year without a tax increase. As, as, as much as we all understand why that's good, we just need to say today that the reason that you might need to stay more on that Act 1 increase side is because it's those other future years where then maybe you very well will have to cut programs to just get to the next subsequent years and survive with a 1% Act 1 increase, if even then the community can handle that or not. Well, who that's knows? why I wanted to be looked at now, because realistically, you know, Steve's, you know, talking about kindergarten and everything. We can't do that next year. We already started enrollment. Like, so that's going to be a future thing that we need to look at. I think we need to look at everything. I know on our work session last Tuesday, you know, there was buses out the bid. Do we, abs and I know there's a chart, but do we absolutely need all of those buses right now? Can we save one or two and put them off or do something else? We need to look at every penny at, that we've got to figure it out because who knows how long we're going to be in this state. And it's not like on May 9th, we're automatically going to go poof, everything's fine again. You know, every, you, you know, who knows what's going to go on. And yes, I understand the budget would be fine, fine before that, but it's not now. So we have to go back and revisit everything and then make the decisions from there. So that's just my opinion, so. And and Tina, I mean, I, I don't want to get into a tit for tat argument, you know, over this, but at the end, if we decide that we're going to save that money and cut it, they, they will make it work because that's the way it's going to be. Just the enrollments don't change. You know, kindergarten just doubles up. Um, so it wouldn't, doesn't make a difference on the enrollments. It just becomes a half day program instead of a full day program. Well, like I said, that's, you no, know, I, understand that. my, I think we need to do the numbers on that. My we need to do the numbers is, on everything. Uh, that's why I said we need the numbers right. on everything. Right. The whole scheme of everything has changed in my opinion. Well, and while problem. I hear you, while I hear you with kindergarten, you know what I mean? We would need to make that decision if, which is a big, big if, sooner rather than later, because people enrolled in that thinking it was going to be full day. We can't very well on oh, I know that. 16th I, I, tell them, oh, never mind, it's half day. I mean, I, I, believe me, believe me, I'm very conscious of that, and it's really something I would, would not want to do. But like I said, the uncertainty moving forward is the big question. And um, that, that uh, nobody's got a crystal ball. Nobody knows what's going to happen this following year, but you know we already got that one letter from from um, you know Oxford Valley Mall. They're looking for another million dollars. They've already re approached uh, uh, Middletown Township for it. They're probably going to be coming to us next, and I don't believe it's something we're going to agree to. But if they do have the property loss that they say they're going to be having, you know, they might get the the appeal assessment. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's a, something that you need to consider. I think everything needs to be considered, unfortunately. How many businesses are not going to be able to open up when they can after all that? So that's more revenue that we've, that we've lost. It might, might, look, I'll just tell you, from my, my sales, I'm, I'm really a retail service business. We're off about 45%. You know, I've, I'm, right now I'm cutting hours. I'm trying not to lay anybody off. I'm cutting hours, but 45% of my business is a huge, huge amount. So yeah, I think we need to look at everything, unfortunately. And yeah, we'll take the money from the one balance issue. We're not going to have a choice. And the big, you know, I, I don't know what the answers are. <laughs> well, we're meeting again on May the 5th. We have to have a tentative budget approved in the month of May. What, what, what is your expectations? Well, obviously we're going to show you numbers for kindergarten. What else, what else do you want to see in that evening? I would like projections of how we can reduce the budget more. And I would like to see not a tax increase or not to the limit. You know, maybe by May 5th, we'll have a better understanding of where the state is going with some of these things. So some of the assumptions that we have will be more concrete as opposed to just guesses right now, so to speak. Okay. Hey, Don, on um, Thursday, 
Are we going to have a more in-depth discussion on what's going to be on our uh, maintenance and repair list um, for the upcoming school year budget? Or you mean the long range facility plan? Well, not so much the long range, but you know, every it's the long range as well as what we what they want to do next year. I don't think we've had a chance to actually go through that in detail. That's on right. How much money they want to spend next next year? Yeah, there's a there's a 1.8 million dollar line item in this budget, and you will see on Thursday night what what the plan is to use that money for. Okay. Uh, you know, let, let's let's just use that for discussion purposes for one second though. If you have that line item in the budget, and because of let's say COVID-19 doesn't let you do anything this summer, and it goes unspent, that that's okay because that would just come back to the fund balance. However, if you cut it out to balance your budget, then you don't you don't get to have that opportunity to do it yeah, again. Well, next I, year. Would, I, 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 I would. I would. I'm not suggesting that, but I mean, we we move it in the fund. I, I know if we take a line item out, we don't get it back. I, I'm yeah. aware of that. And that's but that's true. That's true. Whether we're talking about you know cutting home economics, cutting no, half day, we, we, we would we would we would redirect it. You know, right. it's 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 a matter of re redirecting it um, to something else. I, I agree with what you're saying. I'm more concerned about besides the the future unknowns. I'm concerned about the the fact of 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 the. Um, the Act One increase, what's going to happen with it next year? That that Too part, of it, that part of it, um, um, is mm -hmm. is troubling. So you know that's 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 another issue. You know you have to if you, if you don't if we don't take this opportunity, you know, what's going to happen next year? So there's a lot of a lot of uncertainty. That's why I'm I'm trying to figure it, figure out a way with the to, to shrink not change the light items but shrink our our amount on the reserve going forward to deal with that uncertainty i'm not trying to i'm not trying to take the line items away but if no, there's a cut, the it's a cut. i don't want to take the line items away i don't really want to take anything away unfortunately nobody expected this type of a, a natural event to occur so i think we just need to go read visit everything and look at things in a different way to see if there's anything else we can do before we just say, sure, we're increasing taxes and sure, we're taking money out of the fund balance. Now's the time to do it because everything's turned on its head. All right. Well, anything else that, that you want? I mean, I can understand what you're at, but I'm, I'm not sure what was done two or three years ago, but if there's, if there's anybody has any recollection of that meeting, when you went over those items, we can certainly. I have that list on. Uh, we'll resurface that list in cabinet. Uh, we'll bring it back to this board on May 5th. That list did include kindergarten as like a phase three or third level, third tier. Yeah, I mean, there was like music programs and. Um, we'll put it all back on there. We'll show you that, that again. We have all of that. We can, and, and then, uh, you know, we got new players in cabinet this year than we did then. We'll. Right. we'll maybe there's different ideas. There maybe, maybe we can. Right. Right. Look at six period. There's more. Uh, you know. Oh, what if we try it this way? There might. You know. We just have to look at everything. Is all I'm saying. Well, and that's one of the reasons why I looked at that position in my office. I, I had to offer it up first. If I'm going to lead the, the organization through this, I had to be the, you know, I had to be the leader in that way. So that'll be amazing. We appreciate that, Don. You've got a, you've got a facilities meeting that'll help drive some more of this conversation coming up. You've got uh, the May 5th meeting where we'll be targeted uh, some conversation around uh, the conversation of cuts, where possibly those could be, and Tina will also have for you those charts attached to the May 5th agenda, so you can see the new personnel, where they're going for elementary. Uh, that'll be that'll be available again with some updated numbers from Paul. And I and I think that you know the the essence, the underlying essence, the foundation of the conversation tonight is is really important. That uh, Don had a chance to share that, and that everybody had a chance to understand you know, where we were 
and, and how the earth has moved over the course of these last handful of weeks and what the projections are. And they purely are just kind of gut level. Nobody's able to tell us definitively how that's going to change. But th that's kind of what we're hoping to be worst case scenario. We may be better, but like Don said, who knows? We could be worse. And really, we want to be a little careful about making programmatic decisions based off of that issue, which is one of guessing at what the scenario is gonna look like next year. And so given the fact that we're fortunate to have the fund balance that we do have here, there is opportunity for us to get to next school year and make then educated decisions associated with what we need to do to have a survivable budget going forward beyond just the 2021 20, school year. So that's kind of the essence. We talked about this a lot in cabinet to get to this point. Uh, and I, that's Don's done a nice job of, I think, laying out the landscape for you. But do you have any general questions for him before we shut down tonight on that conversation? Yeah, I have a couple of things I just want to throw in here or, or clarify. Um, Don, I, I got this. You had us at about a deficit of about uh, 900 grand. Yes. Your 2.25 mil is theoretical based on projections of loss revenue. That's that correct. Okay. Just for my uh, education here, what is in our fund balance? Forty million dollars. And how how much of that? And you didn't use any of that in your original projections. That's like correct. we dipped into it for Peasers and others. You. Okay. Nope. Um. And your projection for if we go to our Act One limit, do you have a number on that projected of what that'll bring us in as revenue? Three point three million dollars. Don, of that fund balance, isn't some of that earmarked for certain things? It is, but you could change you could change that if you wanted to. The board could, you know, they could. I was going to get that. I think we had yet yeah, dedicated some funds. I've kind of forgotten what. I don't have all that paperwork in front of me, but it's fungible, I believe. I think the actual amount is $42 million at this point. And the most the most concrete dedication is to the Peasers Fund. You've got plenty of money that we expend yeah. on Peasers. It's easy to move that money in for that purpose. So there's, there's no problem there. Okay. Well, I, I just want to want to make a point while we know the strong fund balance is strong um it doesn't take long to whittle it down uh, as a matter of fact we're going to be talking about a 12 million dollar item come thursday night so i don't want uh everybody to get carried away with the fact that you know we got a uh, a high dollar uh, a balance right now that's going to save the world uh, oh but there, that is what the fund balance is for well, right. So, well, exactly. We're, so we don't raise We're in an emergency. Right. I'm not saying we don't use it, John. I'm just saying. You know, I understand. I'm just yeah. clarifying it. It, it, there, it, can, that's it, what it's for. it can. It can take. It can take a, a hit real quick. Short quick. It's going to take a hit. This it's going to take it's a hit. Going to take a hit. Right. Right. It's just the question of if it's two million dollars or five million dollars. And Thursday nights. Thursday nights. Twelve million won't come out of fund balance. Yeah. And, What's but, that? Well, it could. There's all different ways you could do it. It shouldn't say it that way. Well, that's 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 true. But and, there's and Steve, just from an administrative vision here, we, you know we've been working to get us off of a repetitive use of fund balance to make that gap happen. Without, so, without a doubt. Without, we were successful without a doubt. in getting to that point. And when I say what I just said, I'm only suggesting that you have the cushion and the opportunity not to make rash and I'm not suggesting it would be a rash decision, but you know, it's a quick decision we have to make now to get to a June budget successfully, not to make the educational programmatic decision because you have opportunity to use fund balance one time only next year, if need be, and then make the good decision going forward in terms of what really needs to happen. That's all. I, I understand, but as we all know, next year there'll be another issue that will drive a million or $2 million into the budget on top of our, our regular expenses. So I'm just saying we should move forward very cautiously. I'm done. <laughs> Don, are you done? 
Uh, well, the only thing I was going to say in, in just response to Steve is that hopefully, though, next year and years after, the local economy would, would recover and you would have, you'd go back to your old collection rate, you'd go back to your old mercantile business privilege rates, the occupational. So those, those, those items that we identify the local issues are potentially um, not permanent. They, they will come back when the recovery comes. And that's all I have for you tonight. I'm done. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Any more, Irene? I just wanted to say, Don, I was very impressed at your presentation. I mean, you've obviously done a lot of work, and uh, you've, you've covered all the bases, and, you know, uh, we'll, we'll have to take it from here. But uh, I just wanted to thank you for all your work. Thank you. Thank you for acknowledging that. I appreciate that. Okay, guys. Good night. All right, good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Wait, you know, we didn't talk about the audit. Oh, well, we didn't talk about the audit. You know what? The, uh, Mally's going to come next week, or he can come on the 28th. I'll have to ask Steve whether he wants him to come on the 28th or the, or the 5th. Yeah, I, I'm just cruising through here in my Chromebook, and I went, oops, we probably should have talked about that first. Yeah. All right, it's good. Okay, good night. Good night. Don. Uh, Don? Yes. Yeah, not only did we not talk about the audit, we didn't go through public comment, which is fine because, you know, I just had one question. Go ahead, buddy. Um, I can't figure out where the hell I'm at on this, on this machine, but go ahead. Well, I, I, can't I, see. I, I understand that. That's... That's understandable, but my, my question is, item two on tonight's agenda was tabled for not enough information coming back from Aramark. I understand that. Yes. Um, when will all of item three be posted to board docs? Item three? The, the entire thing of item, the, of the entire agenda item for the budget, the board uh, refinancing opportunities, the budget you just had the uh, PowerPoint on, and then the audit that we didn't get to, when will that be posted publicly? We can probably post all that tomorrow. Okay. That, that's my only question. Okay, John. Thank you. Good night. Now that I found everybody again, I'm going to exit this meeting. <laughs> all right. Good night, all. Good night. Good night.